Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is how we can really quickly and really easily import some characters into our games um, that we can kind of use for like sort of NPCs kind of standing around the place, people you could go up and talk to, um, quest givers, you know, that kind of thing um, that just have kind of a looping animation to kind of fill your scene uh, to make it more alive, I suppose. So, um, and what we're going to use is something that is really kind of commonly used to get um, sort of free characters with uh, a bunch of different animations on, and that is Mixamo. So Mixamo is really good. You need to log in, um, but it's, it's free to make an account and everything, an, uh, an Adobe account. So if we go over to characters here. Um, you can see you've got a whole bunch of different characters. It's about three pages worth. Um, so it's not fully extensive but all of these characters are compatible with all of their animations which is what makes it so useful so um well you can see i've already kind of picked a character here i've got this kind of uh ninjury samurai girl <laughs> potentially um that um i've got here so if i go over to animations um you can see there's, there's actually loads and loads and loads 52 pages worth of animations and that's really the main thing here so I've just picked, um, I think I just searched for an idle animation. The problem is if you were having like a, a walking animation, um, you could have that if they were sort of on like set up as like a patrol, they're kind of just kind of strolling around, you could have a walking animation. Um, but an idle animation is good for ones that are just kind of stood around. <laughs> so if we if we go to like this one, walk idle, and you can tell like which ones are kind of mainly set up for like a male or female character, but obviously they're interchangeable. Um, someone that could be hanging randomly for some reason. There's a bunch of different things. So I think I found, yeah, these ninja ones, so ninja idle. Um, she's kind of sort of doing stuff. Or this one. Whatever, this one would be fine. It looks like he's kind of uh, looking for something. So anyway, um, you can pick your character, you can pick your animation. Um, and what also is probably the most amazing thing about um, Mixamo is that you can bring in your own characters. They don't need to be rigged or skinned or, or, or you know have a skeleton or anything like that. You can kind of bypass all of that work, which is a massive amount of work. Uh, and as long as it's a, a, a biped character, um, it will rig the whole character uh, to be able to use any of these animations that Mixamo has with your own character, which is amazing. So we can also go over here and we can change some of the settings. So that's like overdrive. If we crank this up, overdrive is just going to make everything a bit more kind of dramatic. Um, got the arm space, if we crank that right up, our arms are going to be way up in the, in the air a bit more. Um, Kind of slight with this one, but with some animations, it's uh, more obvious than others. And obviously, you can trim the animation if you want it to be, um, you know, you only want a part of, of an animation to play. But you know, you can play around with that, and that's fine. And I'm happy with that. The one thing I would just advise you with um, with Mixamo and the animations that if you have a walking animation or an animation where a character is moving from one place to another, um, and you have that character also being moved by the blueprint scripts or something within unreal you need to make sure that you tick a box that says walking in place so that they're actually walking on the spot because otherwise you'll get this issue where your character is walking along and then jumping sort of back to the beginning of its animation again um, whilst it's also moving and it, it would be weird but with this one the character is kind of on the spot so we don't have to worry about that so i'm going to hit download um, you get all your formats and things. Um, I would just generally stick, stick with the default one, the um, FBX binary. That's absolutely fine. You've got the FPS. Um, honestly, I think 30 is probably fine. If you wanted to go for 60, you probably could, but 30 is, is generally fine. Um, now, also, this is interesting. The, probably the most important one here is with or without the skin. So the skin is essentially the character. So if you've already got your character imported into the game, like let's say I brought this character through um, and I wanted to add a different animation for her, um, I can go without skin and just bring through the animation. 
but because this is the first time I'm downloading this, I want the character to come with it as well because I don't have the character in my game. So I'm going to have with skin. Keyframe reduction, again, um, don't really need to worry about that. Leave it as it is. Hit download and it will just take um, a few seconds to download. There we go. So I'm going to come over here to my downloads and you can see that I have just this FBX file, Ninja Idol. Um, you can rename it if you wanted to at this point, but that's fine. And then I'm going to come over to my Unreal project. Um, as you can see, if I just hit play, I just have the template for the third person game. I'm going to go to my content drawer. Um, always keep your folders organized. So I'm actually, well, there's a, actually there's a characters folder already. I might as well put it into here. I'm going to make a new folder within characters called Ninja. And in there, I'm going to go import uh, downloads my Ninja Idol. Hit open. Um, we want the animations to come through. So just click here, import animations. Um, again, if you were to import a second animation, um, which I might show you as well at the end, uh, you can choose the skeleton. But at this point, we don't have the skeleton for this character yet. So we can leave that blank. We don't want to assign it to the, the mannequin skeleton. And then hit import all. Um, you always get this smooth in groups one. Don't worry about that. And then again, it will take a couple of seconds to prepare the shaders, which are the materials for your character. Um, and then you have a bunch of things here. So I've got the animation of the character here, which is this one. So if I double click it, I can see there's the animation. Uh, and I've got the skeletal mesh. I've got the physics asset. Um, and then the textures and the materials. So how can I use this in my game? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blueprint class for this character. Um, and I'm going to make it a, well, it doesn't really need the ability to walk around or anything like that. It's just going to be spawned into the world. Uh, if you wanted your character to walk around, then you might want to choose um, character, um, in fact, I'm going to choose character anyway. Uh, I think that's going to be fine. You could go with an actor. So let's call it Ninja. Let's go into here. And I want to add, uh, it's got a character mesh here. Oh, it already has a mesh here for us. That's fine. So we can use this mesh. So see it says skeletal mesh here. So we can find our Ninja Idol skeletal mesh. And there's our character. Okay, notice that she's T posing because the animation is a separate asset. Now, with your animation mode here, you've got defaulted to animation blueprint. So, animation blueprint is going to be for if I've got it um, on a script where it's going to be interactive. So, like when such and such a thing happens, do this animation, and when this happens, do that animation. I'm happy for it to just be looping this idle animation. So, I'm going to go to use animation asset. And I'm going to plug in that, there it is, Ninja Idle Animation. And there she goes. So we can also see that she's kind of floating. So I'm just going to move her down. Oh, a bit laggy. Um, the This capsule here is, the bottom of that capsule is going to be the floor. Um, I'm going to turn the snapping off. Let's move her down. Okay, that seems about right. And then I'm just going to hit compile. So we have our character with the looping animation on. And then what we can do, I'm really getting some lag, um, is just drag her character into the map. Obviously, put the character wherever you want them to be. This is over here. And then there we go, I've push play. And I can go over here, and there she is doing her thing. Okay, so we could just have these sort of characters set up within the world uh, with these idle animations playing. She looks like the scale is maybe a bit large, but I could go into that blueprint and just scale her down, and that would be fine. Okay, so just as I said I would show you, I'm just going to go back to Mixamo again. So if I would now were to have, um, let's say I were to have a walking animation, let's go for walk. Um, 
let's go for this ladylike one, shall we? So obviously at the moment she's moving from one place to another and then jumping back. You don't want that to be happening in game. So what you need to do is put, change this to in place and notice that it just loops naturally. Uh, and then I can hit download. And this time what you would want to do is don't have with skin because we already have the character in there. We can now go without skin, hit download. Back to my game again. In the same folder, we can import the walking animation. And this time you can see it's, oh, well, it's picked the skeleton automatically for us, which is great. Um, and then, well, we don't need to change anything. We'll just hit import all. And there you go, the walking animation has come in and that's ready for us to use. Um, but obviously, if I just applied that to this character now, she, she would, it would just look like she was walking on the spot, which would be weird. So you'd use that walking animation for when your character is actually moving from one place to another. Okay, but I just wanted to keep that short and simple. How we can use a mixer mode to just fill our environment with characters, NPC-like characters. Um, and then obviously, if you wanted them to be interactive, I could go into the actual blueprint. Um, come to the viewport here I could add in if you wanted um, another like sort of box collision detection oops <clears throat> scale that up and you can say you know when the character is within this area whatever it could display a text box it could display um, you know whatever you want it to do play a different animation on a blueprint animation anything like that okay all right that's all for now